You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox and Carl OS. That was Robin Trower, Day of the Eagle. And before that was Jeff Beck, Beck's Bolero. Jimi Hendrix, Bold as Love. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox. It is, I don't know, 13 minutes after 12 bells on a lovely Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? Tuesday. It's Wednesday and it's Londonderry fog and rain outside. That is the good news, that it is. Uh, there was a little bit of rain this morning. I loved it when it's uh, like that. I'm very under the weather, if you notice. And we're here with Randy Backman <coughs> and Tal Backman. Yep. You got a gig, haven't you? Well, we're gigging all over. We, uh, we're plugging a gig we're playing here on the 21st of July. It's, we're celebrating, my new album's called By George. Yeah. And it's for George's 75th birthday. We played it on his birthday, more, February the 25th, in New York, BB Kings. And uh, so we're touring all year with this George Harrison album where we redid his songs in different styles, which you won't recognize until, we, until the singing starts. Yeah. Because I, I basically I tuned all of his songs. They also everybody just copies them. Yeah. The Hollies doing if I needed someone exactly the same. So I thought I'm just gonna as a songwriter to another songwriter just do the songs a little bit different. Were you pals with him? No, I had never met him. I spoke to him once. I toured with Ringo Starr's All Star Band for a whole year in '95 with John Entwistle and Felix Cavalieri and Mark Farner. Zach was on drums. I think Ringo showed up. Yeah. Yeah, was you a big uh, Beatles fan? Oh, of course, yeah. Everybody was. Yeah. So did you like them better than the Rolling Stones? I did. Yeah. They were right. That's the ageless. <laughs> that's the ageless question. <laughs> yeah, I met George a couple of times. He was a nice guy. Yeah, he was if he great. liked you, he was nice. Yeah. You know. So uh, the release of this album. Oh, you're playing it. Yeah, to twenty first. Troubadour. Troubadour. The canyon in Santa Clarita, the 22nd. So do you play, you, you guys play together or you're just hanging out mm. on the road? Oh, uh, well, he's in my band now. He had his own band. He had a big hit, She's So High, a couple oh, of years ago. Yeah. I used to play it on this other station. Yeah. And um, because of this George album, there's a lot of double slide guitar. Yeah. And I'm George, so I'm playing rhythm in the middle. And Tal's on one side, my other guitar player, and they're doing the double slide guitar like George Harrison and helping with the vocals and stuff. So we were just doing tours of Canada. We came down to L.A. to promote the vinyls now out on By George. Double-sided vinyl, black and white marble, big, you know, album, 12-inch square, and the CD's out and starting to get airplane pickup traction on... Because George's birthday, we're celebrating it all year long. And... Uh, we just did the Beatle Fest in New Jersey in uh, early March. That went great. All the Beatle fans loved it. Neil Innes was there, Billy J. Kramer, a bunch of... The singer, Billy J. Beatle, Kramer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Little children. If you're sad and lonely, I'll be sad and... Oh, if you're sad, yeah. But you had that one song, right, Little Children. Yeah. That was a weird song. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, you couldn't do that now, that song. And also you had the birds and the bees. La, 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 la. Yeah. They were the days. They were. You, where, where, in, where in Canada do you, do you reside? Uh, well, I grew up in Winnipeg. Uh, right now I live in Toronto. Tal lives in Victoria. I'm looking to move to Victoria because of the great weather. It's very London weather in Victoria oh, and Vancouver. Yeah, West Coast marine climate, I love it. And Toronto is much like Winnipeg. It's like winter, seven months of the year, freezing. Uh, do you like cold weather, snow and all that? No, but when you're no. a little kid and you grow up, that's it. Your parents dress you up and stand you out in the snow, and they look out an hour later, you're frozen solid. They take you in, you thaw out. That was your playtime outside. You don't no. know any difference. I don't know anybody. Yeah, you don't. When you're born there, that's kind of it. The minute somebody takes you to Vancouver in January, you go, what? This is Canada, and it's like 45 above, not 45 minus? Yeah. Uh, I want to move here. Yeah. Yeah. What, but, but a lot of people love living in Toronto and Winnipeg and that. Well, Toronto's like a small London. It's very... Cosmopolitan. People from all over the world there. Yeah. Uh, so there's great fashion, great looking music, great clubs, great food, great restaurants. 
They love it, but it's just, I've had enough there. I've been there six years. Too busy for you. Too busy. Yeah. Traffic is cuckoo. It's just like L.A. I'm with you. Yeah. I want to move up north. Good. No, Northern California, not, oh. not north where you That's are. That's not north. North is north. <laughs> it's beautiful. True there. north. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's beautiful. You ever been in Northern California? Oh, yeah. I love it up there. Yeah. It, like Eureka and... Yeah. yeah. Well, along the coast more. Yeah. Along... along it, it Why, go, why Eureka? Who? Up there. The little town, Wairika. Wairika? Yeah. Eureka. I know, but there's another one. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Guy doesn't even know. <laughs> but it goes on, man. It goes from like, it starts, you know, that, that when it stops being a desert, which is like around, yeah. around uh, before Big Sur. Yeah. Like, uh, where's that, the Hirsch Castle? place um san mateo or something yeah that, that's where it really starts yeah and then it's like that all the way up to oregon yeah it's along beautiful. the coast yeah so here we are what what year did you start did you start guess who that was my first band um did you join it or was it was it already going i joined um i grew up playing violin which is a lead instrument so when i switched the guitar when i saw elvis on tv I played lead guitar. My idol was Hank Marvin from The Shadows. Yeah. And uh, I got asked to join this band, which basically was a Cliff Richard and The Shadows copy band. And I showed up to play rhythm guitar because that was the place available in the band. And as I was playing rhythm guitar and the lead guy was playing a bad version of Contiki or something by The Shadows, uh, he broke a string. And you showed. And him I finished play. sewing the song. He went, wow, why don't you play lead? I said, great, that's why I came. Yeah. And then... Uh, uh, a year later, we got Shaken All Over by Johnny Kidd and the Pirates. We recorded it. We were called Chad Allen and the Reflections to be like Cliff Richard and the Shadows. Yeah, yeah. We couldn't use the name Reflections because a band called Reflections had a hit called Just Like Romeo and Juliet. So we recorded Shaken All Over, sent it into our record label, and they said, this sounds like a hit. It sounds very British, and you guys did a great job. And what's the name of the band? We said, we don't have a name because we're looking for a name we can't use when we've got a cease and desist. And they said, well, we're just going to put out a white label, shake it all over, and put Guess Who under it, so find a name. And they put it out. It went to number one in Canada, and we were suddenly called Guess Who. And the Who didn't sue you? No, we got out before the Who. We went to England in 67 then. Uh, this was like back in 63, 64. And went and saw the Who at the Marquee Club and sat down with John and Pete Townsend and said, John Entwistle, and said, you guys got to stop using the name. We were the Guess Who. We had it way before you. And they said, oh, bugger off. There's the birds and the yardbirds that could be the Who and the Guess Who. And let's just, let's just coexist on the planet. And we'll do Shaking All Over and you can do My Generation. So that's the way it went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. Um, <clears throat> do, you, do, you, do you own a Fiesta Red uh, Fender like Hank? No, but I played his. He doesn't even own his. Bruce Welsh owns it. That's Bruce's guitar that Hank played on every hit. I went to the Shadows 50th reunion a few years ago at the O2 Center in London, and Cliff was there. He did the, they did the Cliff and the Shadows reunion as well. I went to the Shadows, and I went to their sound check, and I'm sitting in there alone at the Hammersmith Odeon, and uh, they come to the edge of the stage, and they say, do, do you want to play the guitar? And they hand me the, the Fiesta Red Strat, and I go, wow, amazing. And, Hank's, and uh, at the end of the show, Hank said, you know, Bruce takes that home every night. It's Bruce's guitar. I said, you, you've been playing Bruce's guitar in every Shadows hit? And he said, yeah. I thought and he won't give it to me and he won't sell it to me. He takes it home every night. I thought Cliff brought it back from America and gave he did. it to Hank. No, they wanted a Telecaster like James Burden. Yeah. But Cliff didn't bring back a Telecaster. He brought back a Stratocaster. Hank didn't want it. Bruce Welsh bought it. Uh, then he used it because of the wang bar and, and yeah. getting his sound and... Bruce Welsh still owns it. Of course, he, there's been copies, which Hank has. Sure. But the original one is Bruce Welsh's. He has the gold hardware on it, right? Yes. Yeah. And a special um, tremolo that fits in quite differently than the normal fin. It's got a bend in it so he can get to the, his volume control uh -huh. and his E string so it's not in the way. Uh, so, I'm, I'm getting a custom shot one right now. Oh, cool. Of, of it's, you know, it's, it's close enough. But... Um, Rick Springfield came on and we both found out we're both mad, mad Shadows fans. So, mm. so we started playing some. Well, uh, when I went, I took the pick guard. I have the Hank Marvin White uh, Burns guitar with the scroll headstock. Yeah. I took the pick guard. I got his amp, his old spare amp from uh, Vox. Yeah. I took the back of the amp. 
I went on uh, internet and bought the Shadows Greatest Hits the Gold Award. Yeah. Took it. They all signed it. Brian Bennett signed it, and um, Bruce Welsh and Hank Marvin, Cliff signed it. So I have this little Shadows shrine in my house. That's the White Burns guitar. It was actually made in '64, and 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 Hank's real amp. And I have his Watkins Echoplex, which was made by Watkins. It's a prototype. There's no name on it. So it's an old I can't one. even plug it in. It's the first one made. So it doesn't it's 220. work. It works if you do a 220. Yeah. Like here, we got to plug it in where you plug your washer and dryer right. in or a, or a welding torch because yeah. our thing's 110. Our, our power's different. In, in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. I love that uh, that sound. He, he, he was very influential, Hank. Did, did, did he influence you? Obviously, he did. Uh, all my playing, and I grew up with Neil Young in Winnipeg, and that was our main guy. We yeah. didn't play The Ventures or Dwayne Eddy. Right. We played Hank in the Shadows. Yeah. You get the whole Shadows album, like 12 instrumentals. And then you hardly even had a lead singer. You'd go to a dance and play. You had one amp, two guitars and a bass and one amp and a set of drums, and you just played instrumentals. Did they come first? Who came first with like instrumentals, like you just said, The Ventures? And, uh, oh, it was The Shadows. They were the first to, yeah. to do it. Yeah. And uh, I, yeah, Cliff, Cliff I, I used to love Cliff, too. Well, he was kind of like the British Elvis, right? Yeah, which Elvis is, couldn't go there. Elvis couldn't leave America because of the because of the manager. Of his manager being a, an alien. Yeah, <laughs> that was a weird scene. Have you I seen know. that Elvis documentary that's just been on? It's like no, but I heard part. about it. Uh, you know, they tap on it. Obviously, that's old yeah. news, but they tap on a lot of that about the manager. He sounds like a real dodgy character, the Colonel. Yeah, he wasn't even a Colonel. He just come up with. I'm he gonna, just made up the name. Yeah, I'm going to be a Colonel. And he took half of all Elvis's money. Yeah, I'm sure more as well. Well, he paid all the expenses that Elvis's have. Yeah. He made more than Elvis from Elvis. <laughs> what a dodgy character, man. Yeah. Yeah. Should we play some music? Sure. Oh, you want to play now? Or, or... We're here to play. I, you look I'm like plugging you're... my boy George Harrison album. Yeah. We'll do a song that you won't recognize until we start singing. Okay. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on Carlo S. We're, we're here with Randy you Backman. You like me too much. Okay. And Tal Backman. And they're going to rock some Georgie Baby. Okay. That, that's the thing when you get this album and listen to it, you don't know what the song is. It's a game. Okay. Until we start singing. Do you want me to shout out once I realize what it is? Yeah, you can sing along. <laughs> okay. La 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 la, la 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 la, right in time. La 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 la, though you've gone away this morning, you'll be back again tonight, telling me there'll be no next time, if I just don't treat you right, you'll never leave me and you know it's true, cause you like me too much and I like you, yes you like me too much and I like you. Before to leave me, but you haven't got the nerve to walk out and leave me lonely, which is all that I deserve. You'll never leave me, and you know it's true. Cause you like me too much, and I like you. Yes, you like me too much, and I like you. I really do. And it's nice when you believe me. If you leave me, I will follow you and bring you back where you belong. Cause I couldn't really stand it, I'd admit that I was wrong. You'll never leave me and you know it's true. Cause you like me too much and I like you. Yes, you like me too much and I like you. We could keep going, but that's... A sample of what the album's like. It's like oh, revisioning man. George Harrison songs. What'd you stop for? It's good. Oh, here's another one. Uh, don't play a bit. Though. Play all of it, if you're going to play it. Okay. You know, like, uh, the, one of the bis biggest disappointments for me when I was like 16, I went and saw Chuck Berry. Yeah. And I love Chuck Berry. Me too. But when he played live, he'd play 30 seconds, and he had some pickup band, and it was terrible. It was such a letdown. I've seen, I saw him at the 100 Club downtown London. Yeah. Amazing. He didn't know any of his lyrics. Yeah. He didn't tune his guitar. We didn't care. I'm in the audience. It holds about 100 people, 200 yeah, yeah, people. No, no. And we sang all the songs for him. 
His son came, who played guitar, who was about 55 years of age, that every time he gave his son a solo, he tried to play like Mark Knopfler, which didn't fit in Johnny Be Good or, you know, You yeah. Never Can Tell or any of the Chuck Berry songs, so it was terrible. Yeah. Okay, let's do... Um, here comes the song. I didn't know that song, by the way. What was it called? What? I know. Was you it, don't know that song? Are you just oh, doing no. George Harrison songs? Yeah. Or, or when he was George Harrison songs when he was in the Beatles? Well, that was, yeah, all from Beatles. his whole career. That was okay. a Beatles song. Yeah. It's, uh, it sounded familiar. Okay, here's one. Don't play a bit of it. Play, play it. Okay. So this is re re-envisioned. You've never heard it in minor before. Little darling, it's been a long, cold, lonely winter. Little darling, it seems like years since it's been here. Here comes the sun, do, 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 do. here comes the sun. And I said, it's all right. 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 Darling, I see the ice is slowly melting. Little darling, it seems like years since it's been here. Here comes the sun, do, 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 do. here comes the sun, and I said, It's all right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Sun, 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 here it comes. Sun, 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 here it comes. Sun, 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 here it comes. Listening to Jonesy's Jukebox, Carl OS, my guests Randy Backman and Tal Backman. That was Peter Green, Man of the World. Then we had the Shadows, baby, Apache. Yes. That's funny. You're a big fan of I love too. playing that. Well, you just hit the guitar. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be every. Uh, it was a bit before my time as far as picking a guitar up. I, I still, I, 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 I was Johnny Come Late and I didn't pick a guitar up till mm. I was like nineteen. But that was like the perfect song to want to play guitar when you hear the shadows. Oh yeah, it I'm is. I'm sure that inspires. There's a simplicity in it. 
that all put together is complex. Yeah. It's not a bunch of guys going berserk. Everyone's Bruce Welsh doing that. And then the copying on the Tom Tom. Yeah. And the bass just doing simple notes and Hank. Yeah. All very simple. Do you think... I mean, did they have a producer? Or did they just do it themselves? No, they had a producer. Nori Paramore was their Shadows producer. He also wrote a lot of the string arrangements, like in Wonderful Land. Yeah. The, the beautiful strings and stuff like that. So they kind of had a, a George Martin, so to speak, with Nori Paramore. Yeah. And yeah. most of their great songs are written by Jerry Lorden, who wrote Apache, who wrote Wonderful Land, and he wrote a lot of their great songs. So all instrumentals, though? All instrumentals. Yeah. Once in a while, if you go to Shadows album, I have them all, they would sing two- or three-part harmony. They love the Everly Brothers. Whenever I go and hang out with Bruce Welsh at, at London at the Sods, which is the Society of Distinguished Songwriters, yeah. you have to have written 10 million sellers to get in there. Yeah. And Bruce Welsh gets a little tipsy at the end of the night. We get guitars and sing Everly Brothers. It's Wake Up Little Susie and Bye Bye Love and Dream, 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 Dream. Yeah. They love the shadows. So they, I mean, the Everly Brothers. They, they, so they sang maybe one song, an album, but they basically were an instrumental band. And then... They had two lives. They yeah. were there on their own, and they backed Cliff Richards. Cliff, yeah. Did you like the movies? Did you see any of the movies? I have the, um, them all uh, on D uh, DVD. Summer Holiday was my favorite movie. I still want to buy a red bus and live in it, put a piece of property, yeah. live in the top, and dr drive around in this. They had the first tour bus in the world that everyone in Nashville has now. It was great. Double-decker London bus, and Wonderful to be Young, Expresso Bongo. I've got all the Cliff movies. The young ones. Because they, yeah, the young Because in the middle of the movie... They'd have the shadows in a nightclub playing, and it was before there was video, so yeah. it's the only way you could see the shadows playing. One selling of their records, songs. selling yeah. records. Oh yeah, it's like the monkeys. Yeah, you know, but way better than the monkeys. Well, they were actually a real band. <laughs> they were a real band. Yeah, you know, but it was a, it's a great, you know, from back then that was the new way of selling stuff. You know? Yeah, it was. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I hope I don't give you this. This uh, flu, whatever it is. Mm. Um, I hear you have a lot of Gretches. I did. I sold 385 of them to Fred Gretch. You sold them back to him? Yeah. He's, well, I collected them for years. And uh, he came. To, he called me up one day and said, I got the name Gretch back because they had sold the name Gretch. Defender? Uh, t yes. And he had gotten um, the Gretch name back to make guitars. Then he made a distribution deal with Fender. And he said, but our factory burnt down. We've lost all our templates. And you have 300 Gretches. Can we take them and copy them to make new Gretches? So every new Gretch made that's out there in the stores is a copy of my collection. I hope you got so a pretty take, penny. Take, I was going to say, you got them dead to rights? or you got Yeah. Them? They took three or four guitars at a time and calipered them and measured them and Kept made them. them. And then they set, gave me the prototypes. And then three years later, Fred Gretch came to me and he said, okay, we got our Gretch line going. And Fender has a museum. Framus has a museum. Rick and Becker, you have my museum. I want to buy all your guitars. And I said, great, because I had 300, come up? 350 guitars in a room that I could never even go in. It was like a library. They're all in their cases, all stacked up, and I would take one out at a time and play them. I hope you got a pretty penny. I did. It bought me my flat in Covent Garden in London. That's all? Just kidding. Yeah. That's no, expensive. A flat in Covent Garden. Oh, I know. We're talking three million pounds there. Yeah. Shepherd's Market. Yeah. Um... So, what what was with what? Why did you like Gretsch? Because of the whammies and all that. Um, the first guitar player I saw that made a whole lot of sense to me was um, Dwayne Eddy. Yeah, an American bandstand. Yeah, uh, Eddie Cochran, yeah. same guitar. Yeah, um, was that a Chad white Atkins? Falcon? No, it wasn't no, a white. No, no, it was the orange one, sixty-one twenty, the away, big right? orange one, which Bruce Welsh also played in "Wonderful to Be Young." You can see him playing an orange Gretsch. Chuck Berry played one. Uh, it was like a great rock and roll guitar. And when you grew up in a place like Winnipeg, and they had like one Gibson guitar in the window and one Gretsch in the window, you admired them both. There was the blonde Gibson that I call the Chuck Berry, the ES-175, whatever it was. I would go and stand next to Neil Young and just stare at the guitar and dream and go in and say, can we play the guitar? And the guy would say, no. I know you don't have the money to buy it, so you can't play it. We would dream about these guitars. And uh, finally, I got an orange Gretsch, as did Neil Young. He still has his. Mine got stolen. And um, they, were, they just have a very unique sound. And then they became, they fell out of fashion because all the Gibsons and Fenders came in strong. And that's when I started to collect them because mine was stolen. And in trying to get mine, I just kept buying Gretsches. It was my midlife crisis was yeah. instead of chasing young girls, which yeah. I do now. 
<laughs> was chasing after the elusive Gretsch guitar that got stolen. And I ended up with like a couple of hundred of them. And then I was able to sell all those to Fred Gretsch. Yeah. So it ended up being a great thing for me. But then when the Traveling Wilburys came out and wanted to do promo shots, they went to Norman's Rare Guitar here yeah. in, in L.A. Yeah. And Bob Dylan, you know, uh, Tom Petty, they all got a different Gretsch. So when their cover was, their picture was in Time Magazine, Newsweek Magazine, Rolling Stone, with a country gentleman in Orange 6120 and a Silver Sparkle Jet, everybody wanted those. That was also the MTV era. Yeah. Where it was very boring to be on MTV with a blonde Gibson or a yeah. Sunburst Strat. They wanted Gretsches, which were orange and green and silver and white and yeah, yeah. purple sparkle and everything. So the Gretsches came back in style, and that's when I... Fred Gretsch approached me to, to buy all my guitars. They were like Cadillacs, weren't they? They were. We'll use Cadillac paint. Yeah. It was called Cadillac the Green. The Sparkle. The Cadillac V8. They made a tailpiece out of the V8 that was on the side of the Cadillac, mm. saying it was a V8 engine. That was their, it was called a Caddy G tailpiece. It was a big V with a G in it. Yeah. I had a white Falcon. Fabulous. With, with uh, the red rubies in it. Yes, in the knobs. Yeah. Those were real rubies. I got it in 75 uh, off of, uh, it had a long story. First of all, it was the Sylvain Sylvain from the New York Dome. Oh, yeah. He had it. He traded it with um, Joe Strummer from The Clash, and I got it off of Joe Strummer. And then um, oh, man, Phil Linnett got it off me Oh, for a very small price. <laughs> and now it's in his, it's in his uh, museum in and Ireland. And now you wish you had it. I do wish. Yeah, I wish I had all my Gretches back, yeah. too. Now the price is tripled for what I sold it for. Yeah. Oh, well. Say la vie. Easy come, easy go. That's yep. the way I look at things. But I do grind my teeth at night. Woulda, shoulda, coulda, you know. <laughs> yeah. Certain things. But um, what are we doing, Shovel? You, you want to hear that? You're probably sick to death of this song. No. It was, they played it last week. Jimmy Fallon played it with uh, Kevin Bacon. Yeah. They copied the original Guess Who uh, video. Yeah. Like... Into the song. <laughs> Segway. See, he's a radio guy, he knows. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox, Carl OS. That was the Guess Who, American Woman. And my guest is Randy Backman and his son, Tal Backman. And that was, uh, was you playing guitar on that? Yep, I wrote the song, live on stage, broke a string, put on the guitar, tuned it up. Tuned it up, started to play that riff. The whole band ran on stage, we wrote it in an instant on stage. A lot of people have covered that, haven't they? Yeah, Lenny Kravitz did it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very well. The Almighty did it. A whole bunch of heavy metal bands. Heavy metal bands. Have heavy, done metal. It. heavy metal. Heavy <laughs> metal. And um, just last week, I said Jimmy Fallon and uh, Kevin Bacon did a version of it. Um, What's your biggest band that's covered one of your songs? Like, Take Care of Business? Has someone covered I think, that? Well, way back, I had These Eyes, Junior Walking the All-Stars did it. That was great. It was like, you know, an R&B Motown yeah. version. But I think Lenny Kravitz doing American Woman. And then Lenny Kravitz was playing New Year's Eve about 10 years ago, and Prince joined him on stage. So if you Google that, yeah. New Year's Eve, Lenny, yeah. Prince, both doing American Woman, both doing guitar solos. Prince is an amazing guitar player. Yeah. The solo he takes in that is just Amazing. Yeah. With a big band, like 12-piece band, they're playing it right at midnight on New Year's Eve. Yeah. That's kind of the, the biggest moment. Is that a thrill for you? Something that you Oh, wrote? yeah, it is. That, I mean, like I said, four days ago, we started to get emails. Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Fallon, he's there dressed up, looking like Burton Cummings singing, and Kevin Bacon's like doing me on guitar. It's it's a thrill. It's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's cool. you got a radio show, right, in Canada? I do. It's called Randy's Vinyl Tap, and it's two hours uh, like Spinal Tap. Yeah, that's two hours every uh, Saturday night, and then it's repeated Sunday and the following Friday, and it's on Sirius One Six Nine in the states. Yeah, and I just play all my old vinyl, just yeah. like you do. Yeah, yeah, and tell the stories. And when I met Cliff Richard, when I met Jimmy Page, when I met Brian yeah. Wilson, I've been on tour for forty years. I know all these guys. I've 
driven with them, slept with them. You know what I mean? Excuse did me? gigs wait, with wait, them. Wait, let's go back. Easy. Let's rewind no. for a second. Easy. You slept with uh, them? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, sleeping in a tent I know what you backstage. Mean. I know what you on mean. On a tour bus. I know. I don't mean in a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I was going to say something. I forgot. Well, so that's my radio show. And it's on CBC. If you Randy's Vinyl Tap, CBC.radio, you'll get it on your laptop. I mean, people listen all over the world, and they're called tap heads to yeah. listen to Vinyl Tap. Yeah. And Tell helps me with the show. He does the, the research. I know the stories, but he'll say exactly the date that the song came out by the shadows and when it went to number one. Or... So he's on the computer a lot. Yeah. Googling. Yeah. Um, that's what I was going to say. Well, I had him on here last week, Derek Smalls, and he was in character on mm -hmm. Spinal Tap. Yeah. He was great, man. He came in with the wig. It was so much fun, wasn't it? He was great. He wouldn't get out of character. Luke Warm Water. Oh, he was great. It was so much yeah. fun. Well, listen, thanks for coming by. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed yourself here. I did. It was fun. It was very, you said it was loose. Yeah. It was looser than loose. Yeah. Is it I loose? love it. No. Lo looser than your show? Um, yes. Do you, do you, so yours, you don't do yours live, right? You pre-record it? No, I uh, well, I pre-record eight at a time because I'm on the road. So I'll sit and do four and four, and it's on every weekend. So yeah, when I, yeah. I just did eight, they'll last me till the end of July, and then yeah. we got renewed our 13th year, which is amazing. So we'll do that in August. It'll start to play in September. Yeah. Well, let's just re uh, reiterate again. July 21st, you're playing at the Troubadour. Troubadour. And July 22nd at the Canyon in S Canyon. It's not the Canyon Club, is it? It's the Canyon in Santa Clarita. That Santa Clarita. I think it's the Canyon Club. It used to, what is there well, is they, a Canyon somebody Club. Somebody bought it and they changed the name. It's the same people. The same play. Oh. That have the one that's off the 101. Oh yeah. I, I believe it's the same yeah, people. Yeah, it is. It's kind of confusing. But I hope I didn't make it more confusing to anyone who's going to come. If and see they know it. where the old Canyon Club is, that's where the new Canyon Club is. No, it's is. not. It's oh. not. That's what that's the bit was confusing. Oh, okay. It's in Santa Clarita. It's basically off the 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 5. In, near Magic Mountain. Well, we'll be driving around looking for it, along with everyone else who's driving yeah. around looking for it. <laughs> yeah. And you got a new album out. Um, well, by George. By George. By um, Jove. By George. And uh, you're doing all covers of uh, George, George Harrison. George Harrison, reinterpretations of his songs. And you got to play something on your own spare time and listen to my Robin Trower tribute. Okay. Because I'm playing all the Robin Trower stuff in there. All right. Nice one. Well, all thanks right. for coming by. We're going to visit the Duke, yeah? We'll be back in a little bit.